White House is deciding right now how to respond to Syria's suspected chemical attack. Members of Congress are not holding back either and voicing their opinions on what the United States should do. Senator John McCain last night on the Situation Room explained it this way. If it's just some, some strikes with cruise missiles, then it will not only not do any good, it may be counterproductive and help uh, Bashar Assad with his propaganda. So um, I greatly am concerned about what kind of strikes these will be and what they will entail. Now, other lawmakers are demanding the president get their approval before launching any military action. 31 Republicans and six Democrats in the House have sent a letter to the president, I quote, engaging our military in Syria when no direct threat to the United States exists and without prior congressional approval would violate the separation of powers that is clearly delineated in the Constitution. Republican Congressman Scott Rigel uh, wrote the letter, and he joins us from Washington. So, Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. Let's, let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, the War Powers Resolution, it does allow the president to launch a military strike uh, with a congressional declaration of war uh, or a congressional authorization for use of force or if the United States is attacked. So, in this situation, uh, not, unlike, not like uh, the Libya operation in 2011, the administration got around that, saying that the U.S. wasn't engaged in official hostilities. Uh, do you feel like it's appropriate that the president has to reach out to you this go-round or, or take the Libya model? It's clear to me and an increasing number of my colleagues, as expressed in the letter, that has uh, doubled in support uh, from yesterday to today. Went from 40 co-signers to 80 as of right now, and I'm certainly confident we'll have more than 100 by the end of the day, that we are calling on the president to say, Mr. President, if you believe that the facts are compelling, that the strategic interests of the United States are so clear here, uh, you, you need and really indeed must to be in adherence with the Constitution. Mm -hmm. He must call us into joint session, lay the facts before us, and seek and receive specific statutory authority to engage U.S. forces because we have not been attacked, nor is an attack imminent on the United States. Um, so absent those two conditions, he must, according to our Constitution, uh, come to this body and engage us and, in fact, get specific statutory authority. And, and Congressman, it is, is your contention here that there is a process, a protocol that has to be followed? Or are you looking for additional information or evidence of what's taking place on the ground? Because we did hear from Jay Carney yesterday who said, look, the DNI, the official intelligence report, is on its way. It will be provided in redacted form to members of Congress, which essentially do show that Assad was responsible for a chemical weapons attack. This is not an acceptable substitute for engaging the institution itself. I appreciate and respect the fact that the president is engaging uh, members of Congress. This is good, and I encourage more of it, both on the Senate side and the House. But it is not, in any respect, a substitute for uh, formally calling us into session, a joint session, laying, before, uh, laying the facts before us without disclosing, of course, sources and methods of intelligence then we, as the representatives of the American people, can uh, weigh in on this, as we should. Look, the president is looking what? for validation from around the world uh, for his actions here. I, I applaud that as well. But the real moral foundation upon which to engage U.S. forces is found in right. the American people. And, and as called for in our Constitution. Uh, well, bear with us, uh, Congressman. We've got, we've got the ranking member of the House Armed Services Committee, uh, Congressman Adam Smith, also on the line, who's just returned from visiting the Syria-Jordan border. Uh, Congressman Smith, do you believe, firstly, that the president needs to get some form of congressional approval uh, before he might take any uh, action? And, and how would you vote anyway? Well, I mean, first of all, the historical precedence is no, um, that the president doesn't require congressional action for a variety of different things. Certainly it happened in Libya, uh, but it's happened in a number of other places as well, Grenada, Panama, a number of times presidents for decades have acted um, without Congress first giving approval. Now, I mean, the Constitution's a little bit murky on the question. The War Powers Resolution is, as uh, Congressman Riedel pointed out, says that, you know, absent an imminent attack, they have to. But like I said, the historical precedent is they don't. Personally, I think it would be better if they did. 
um, if they got congressional approval. And in this particular case, I, I am still highly skeptical of how effective it's going to be to do a one-time strike on Syria. And, you know, we have to be leery. Number one, it's not going to be that effective. And number two, what if Syria strikes back? They have said, you know, they will defend their interests. What if Syria shoots at one of our ships or one of our planes or tries to attack us in another way? Um, are we prepared to get into that type of an acceleration of the conflict? That I think the president has been very clear, and I think very right, um, that we're not really in a position and shouldn't um, engage our military. And certainly, you know, what Assad is doing is terrible, but we're not in a military position to go in there and fix that. And I'm awful we 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 weary, worried about us committing ourselves to something that might start us down a path that we shouldn't start down. And, and Congressman, uh, can you describe for us, because you, you, you were visiting the, the Syrian Jordan, Jordan border there, who did you talk to? What did you see? What is taking place on the ground? Were you on the Syrian side? Were you on the Jordanian side? And, and what did you make of what's happening there, what you just saw? Well, we were on the Jordanian side, but we were only about 10 or 15 feet from the uh, Syrian side. And we were there with the uh, Jordanian military and government getting their brief on their border security efforts. And, you know, right across the border, you've got all of the Syrian border checkpoints. Um, gosh, as you go along that border, there's, you know, 50 or 60 of them. And on a daily basis, they're being contested. Uh, between the rebels in Syria, various different rebel groups in the regime. And on, from one day to the next, the regime controls a certain number of those border checkpoints, um, and the next day it changes. So there's, there's an ongoing fight um, over those border checkpoints right across the border from Jordan. Um, uh, Congressman Rajel, just want to very quickly ask you, um, if I may, uh, as we come to the end of our discussion here, if there was a vote, assuming for, for the purposes of this question, you are being invited now to have a vote, would you vote for some form of military action or giving the president the authority for some form of military action? Based on the information that I have now and uh, the inadequate case that, as I see it that the president has laid out, the ambiguity that is present, uh, I would vote no. But the process by which uh, we need to navigate through this, which is for him to call us into joint session, uh, would give us the opportunity to right. allow for a more rigorous examination of, of the data and the case to be made. So I am open to the argument, but at this point the answer would be no. All right, Congressman Ringel, as well as Adam Smith, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Interesting, Richard, here, because there is a window here. The president is planning on going to Russia, St. Petersburg. That's on Tuesday for the G20 summit. And you've got the, the British Parliament, of course, voting on this tomorrow. So you've got a five-day window. Would that be enough time for members of Congress to come back, approve this, have the president lay out his case, and then carry out those strikes? And you've got Ban Ki-moon at the United Nations requesting that whatever is done and however it's done at least wait until the inspectors leave or finish their job I think is the way it's put, more correctly put and that doesn't happen until Sunday. All right so members of Congress scheduled to return from the summer recess that's September 9th they could be called back anytime now